Well, obviously, I'm not in my studio, nor I'm in front of a green screen. I'm actually in Decatur, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, on our first post-vaccinated road trip to see our grandson. And we decided we'd stay longer. So as a result, I've got to record some of the episodes here from Georgia. Now, I didn't bring a lot of gear with me. In fact, I'm recording this on my iPhone 10. So before we begin, and I know some of you say, well, you have already begun, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Because I am recording this on the iPhone 10, this will be the on-camera sound, but the voiceovers I'm gonna record on my laptop. So the audio won't exactly match, but you know, you get what you get. So as an example, this is the on-camera sound. And here is the voiceover. Everybody cool with that? Doesn't exactly match, but then you get what you pay for. Okay, let's begin. In a previous episode, we had a lot of fun talking about groups that were called the next Beatles and of course weren't. So in this episode, we're gonna kind of follow that idea and look at six singer-songwriters who were called the next Bob Dylan. You think you know who they are? Okay, let's drop the needle. Bob Dylan has recorded 39 official albums over a career lasting more than 50 years. He was once referred to as a young Woody Guthrie and as the voice of a generation. He was called a protest singer, a crooner, yeah, even with that singing voice of his, and the world's best songwriter. Characteristically, he disdains all labels. He's just Bob Dylan, and now, as he turns 80 years old, he literally has nothing to prove. Since he exploded on the music scene, there have always been comments about who will be the next Bob Dylan. There were six singer-songwriters who got labeled that. Let's take a look at who they are. First up is the first artist to be called the next Bob Dylan, a Scottish singer-songwriter. Donovan Leach released his first album in 1965. It was called What's Been Did and What's Been Hid, and it contains that never-forgotten song, Catch the Wind. And yeah, he does sound like Dylan. But watch the movie Don't Look Back, and you'll see Bob Dylan cruelly shut Donovan down. Donovan will be the subject of a future episode because his career took some interesting turns. He started out as a folk singer, then became a transcendental psychedelic hippie. And he's still recording today. I think he's more of a gentle spirit than Bob Dylan, who can sometimes be vicious and quite cruel. The next artist who was called the next Bob Dylan is a New Yorker named Elliot Murphy. His debut album was Aqua Show, and it was released in 1973. It was critically praised, and Rolling Stone magazine said, He's the best Bob Dylan since 1968. This is a great album, and Elliot is still working today, and he will be featured in a future episode. Of course, any comparison to Bob Dylan would have to include Gordon Lightfoot, a Canadian singer-songwriter who is still active today. Gordon holds the distinction of having one of his songs, Early Morning Rain, covered by Bob Dylan on Dylan's self-portrait album. Gordon has had many hits like Sundown and The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald among them. And his career deserves his own episode as well. And it'll happen. Out of Chicago came a singing mailman. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about John Prine. When his debut album was released, he was called the next Bob Dylan. It was his ability to create songs with relatable people and tell their story in a simple yet commanding voice. His big hits were songs like Angel from Montgomery, Hello in There, Sam Stone, and so many more. I had the privilege of seeing John Prine appear live many times. Some great stories there. Now, sadly, he's no longer with us, but his music lives on. I also had the privilege of seeing another artist perform live who was also called the next Bob Dylan. And that would be Loudon Wainwright III. And he's still working today as well. He had a big hit with Dead Skunk in the Middle of the Road. And of course, who could ever forget his love song to his young son Rufus, who now is a singer-songwriter in his own right, and has to live with his father's love song to him as an infant, entitled 
Rufus is a tit man. And last, but certainly not least, on our roster of the next Bob Dylans is the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen. Yes, on Bruce's first album, he was called the next Dylan. And if you want to hear the influence, listen to the lyrics and the structures of the song Blinded by the Light. Of course, Bruce carved his own career, quite different from Bob's. And yes, I saw him many times, and there are some great stories to be told. One of the first times I saw him was in a gymnasium in Santa Barbara. Then I saw him at the Roxy in LA, and I was in the third row center stage when he performed at the LA Coliseum. But that's a story for another day. So, six artists that were stuck with the handle of being the next Bob Dylan, who weren't, but still found their own successes. And of Bob himself, <laughs> well, may he stay forever young and keep a rockin'. If you like this episode, hit the like button, and you can also leave me a comment down below, and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out. Most of the albums that I talk about can be found at your local vinyl store or on eBay. Individual songs most likely are on Spotify, Apple Music, or Amazon Music, or even some on YouTube.